Hi, this is Mimi here. And uh, this is uh, our guest speaker for the day. I will introduce him shortly, but thank you so much for joining us. This is day three of our case study discussion of curious and interesting cases on the PGA Tour. So today we have two particular case studies we'll look into. If you would like, you can revisit our last two days. It's been recorded. So let's jump into it. I do have a presentation uh, for today's case study. So then let me just pull that up real quick. All right. So uh, let me introduce you uh, briefly to uh, uh, for our uh, of our guest speaker today. This is Mr. Danny Ho. He also happens to be my father, a level three RNA certified uh, rules official, which is the highest uh, certification you can get uh, yes. in, as a RNA rules official. So uh, on the right lower corner there, you can see that he actually been to St. Andrews to attend the seminar and the examination. So that's been uh, very cool and you know very envious that you actually get to go to the St. Andrews, kind of the birthing place of golf. Right. So that's amazing. So thank you so much for joining us today. He's also a member of the HKGA rules team. So he has been officiating for many years now, including junior, adult, international, and local events. So are you ready? Yes, I am. Yeah. Great. So we have two case studies we'll look into. Right. And then because today is the last day, we'll mm. we'll just kind of go into more of a, a discussion at the end. Great. Okay. So the first one, I think this is pretty memorable for most people. It's back in 2018, the Phil Mickelson meltdown on the putting green. <laughs> so let's take a look at this video here. I think I think most golfers who watch tournament golf have seen this. Now, Phil losing it, absolutely, because the greens are so fast. He ran after the ball and tapped the ball. Not just not just once, I think. I think he did it. No, he piled it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then he marked the ball. Right. So, so, you know, according to the rules, everybody knows you should never, you well, know, stop yeah. or deflect the ball in motion. Uh, when the ball... Uh, play from the green in motion mm -hmm. and someone uh, especially the player or his or her caddy mm -hmm. stops or deflects the ball deliberately that is a breach of rule right. okay that's a two stroke penalty breach okay but in this case Phil Mickelson ran after the ball and he didn't he didn't just stop it. He 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 piped from there. Okay, so the piping, the action of piping was deflecting the ball mm -hmm. in motion, right on the green. So there's a two-stroke penalty right there. And then after that action, he marked his ball, lifted it, okay, and then he replaced the ball and play again uh, for his next supposedly uh, his next stroke, right? Uh, yes. And the, and at that point, he was playing the ball from the wrong place. So there were two breaches of rules there, but this event happened in 2018, right? So 2018, the, they were still using the old sets of rules. So um, the ruling there was the player was playing a moving ball, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, that's only two strokes penalty for playing a moving ball uh, back then. So um, Mickelson scored a 10 instead of an eight uh, for that hole. Yeah, I suppose he actually got off easy because uh, it from the committee, they can deem it as a uh, lack of sportsmanship, a serious breach, yes. and he could be disqualified. Yes, and uh, but uh, the committee was kind of generous, you know, they didn't uh, disqualify him, mm -hmm. uh, but we have a new set of rules right now after 2019, uh, the player uh, has reached two rules, two separate rules and two, two different acts, mm -hmm. actually. The first one was, he was deflecting the ball uh, in motion on the green. Secondly, he played the ball from a wrong place. So. 
uh, it should be forceful penalties now. Yeah, so simply put, if, yeah, okay, so okay, we're just going to put into a scenario that it's more applicable to most golfers because mm -hmm. most of the time the greens are not that fast mm -hmm. and you don't run after the ball and do that. But what if you're putting uh, towards the hole and then there's water right behind, right? So, so you see that your ball is going for the water. You run after it and you stop it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so here's an interesting thing because what we're supposed to do is to um, assume where the ball would have gone mm. before you stop it. Mm -hmm. If it's in the water, then mm. you have to get a penalty, mm. proceed with those procedures. See, okay, if you uh, deliberately stop or deflect the ball in motion, uh, when the, the ball was playing from, from the green, right? You have to cancel that, that stroke. That stroke doesn't count. You have to replace the ball on the, its original spot and play again, plus two stroke penalty, mm. all right? But if the ball was not played from the green and you or your caddy say, uh, ran over there, stop the ball, because uh, the ball might, might have gone into the, the water mm. and uh, uh, for, for some reason, whatever, whatever reason it was, uh, your caddy stopped the ball there mm -hmm. before it, the ball ran into the water, you have to play the ball, from the spot where the ball would have come to stop. Mm -hmm. So you have to estimate, say the ball was rolling down slope, uh, uh, obviously it, it would go into the water for sure. Then you have to uh, take a penalty drop from that uh, penalty area. If it's playable, you can play from inside the penalty area, plus two stroke penalty. So that if you take a penalty uh, stroke, in that uh, red penalty area, for example, you got three stroke penalty. So on the other hand, if I'm just hitting, I'm chipping the ball, I'm going uh, onto an elevated green. Mm. Uh, this is frustrating, right? Because mm. you chip it and you chip it again and it just rolls back down. Mm. So on the third time you get really frustrated, mm. you chip it and you finally just stop the freaking ball. You're mm. like, you're not coming back to its original place. So at um, in that scenario, what do you do? Same thing, you know, the ball would, would have rolled down maybe another five or six feet. So you have to place the ball on that estimated spot to play your next stroke plus penalty. Mm -hmm. okay, so, that, uh, so simply said, if you ever stop the ball in motion, you know the direction mm -hmm. it's going, you have to estimate right. its possible length or wherever yes. it was gonna go. Yeah. At the two strokes. Yeah, of course, it's, it's an estimation, you know. That's uh, uh, so it's just you use your, your your golf sense. But anyway, uh, when the when, when the ball was play from the green is a different story. You have to cancel that that, that stroke. You, you have to re replace the ball onto that uh, original spot and play that your next shot plus penalty. All right. right? Okay. So uh, we move on to the other case now, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that happens to everyday golfer so you might you might have to uh, listen into the audio so you can definitely search it up so this is back in 2020 so uh in in the case of the case studies that we talked about it's fairly recent two years not too long ago mm -hmm. it's adopting the new rules already mm -hmm. so what you see here is uh it's matthew sharpstein this is the u.s amateur uh one of the shots and it was it, he knows what was happening so mm -hmm. He addressed the ball and he took a backswing and the ball moved during mm. his backswing. He hasn't made came down and made mm. contact yet, but you can tell that there was some sort of hesitation there. So you mm. see there, he, he knows that, right. Hey, I, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Rules official came. And, and uh, again, the discussion here is did he Matthew cause the mm. ball to move mm. or was it natural forces? Okay. In, in that case, because Matthew grounded his club. So uh, before the, the, the takeaway, before the backswing, right? So the, the rules official would treat that, would treat that ball has been moved by the player. Mm -hmm. So he was the cause because he grounded his club right behind. In that process, he pressed down the, the, the grass a little bit so during the, the ball moved during the takeoff. It's, 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 it's kind of a natural thing, you know, because 
the, the grass behind the ball was a little bit lower than usual, right? So uh, it's a very um, uh, reasonable uh, to judge that the ball was uh, moved because of the player. But if Matthew did not touch the grass uh, at the time of the ball moved, then the ball, the, the, the cause of the, uh, the ball to move was due to natural forces. Okay, so in this case, uh, the rules officials, uh, I think they- uh, They did they give, done, they, they they done, did uh, the, give the, the penalty. The, the penalty, it was a good call. But anyway, there's there are basically four, four possible causes that the ball would move on. Uh, on the fairway or even on the, on the green. Now, the first one is by the player or his or her caddy, okay? The second thing is by natural forces like wind, water, or uh, uh, gravitation because the slope of that, uh, the lie. Um, number three, uh, his opponent in match play or his opponent's caddy. And number four is outside influences like uh, 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 or as I influence, I have already mentioned mm -hmm. uh, the four. The four type is um, in match play, your opponent or the opponent's caddy. So if it's not known or not certain that any of these, any of the um, the uh, uh, players or opponents or or playing partners, whatever, none of these had caused the ball move, that the ball, uh, the movement of the ball should be treated as moved by natural forces. But if the player or their caddy moved the ball, they would just have to replace it to its original spot, right? Yes, uh, plus one stroke penalty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So there's definitely a lot of judgment in terms of if it's uh, accidental or deliberate as well, mm -hmm. because if it's, I guess if it's deliberate, then it will be the general penalty. Yes. Uh, if, if, even if you touch the ball deliberately, you're not supposed to touch the ball when the ball is in play, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that, that's the, the difference between the accidental and the uh, uh, deliberate action. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. When the, ball, when the ball is considered moved, the ball has to come to rest in the any other position than the original position, then the ball has been moved. Mm -hmm. But if the ball oscillates back and forth and comes back to its original spot, the ball has not been moved. So that, that's, that's the difference between moving or, but, and uh, uh, it's uh, clearly stated in the, the rule book that uh, has to be observed by naked eyes, mm. okay? You, yeah, you, you, I think, can, you can use the high definition. Yeah, I think a, a lot of the USGA got a got some got some heat for that right. because they were they were they had cameras for the TV uh, that zoomed in on players' balls, and they were saying that oh that moved you know zero point three <laughs> mm right, or right, something, right, right. which is unreasonable because mm -hmm. you know there there will be some sort of movement uh, that cannot be seen right. by the naked eye. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's something to take note of, especially if you hit into the long grass right. and you're addressing the ball behind, sometimes just the movement of placing the club, even an inch behind the ball mm. might cause it to kind of oscillate to just vary a little bit. Yeah. But- It um, might come back to the original uh, position. I, I think this comes yeah. from personal experience, but yeah. also as a little tip is to not address fully and place the club on the ground when you're on a very, interesting terrain yeah. like the rough like long rough mm. right because even if you dangle the club and the ball moves it will not be your fault it's smart to do that you know, yeah it would be much time. smarter yeah. to do that yeah. because it's it's it's, it's, not, it's not worth it you know if you uh, uh touch the grass and the ball moved and then and and then you cause the ball to move and there's a one stroke penalty it's just it's, it's not worth it you know? On the other hand, I saw a very disheartening case of a PGA. I, I don't remember who it was, but what happened is that they took a drop from the red penalty area, which is close to the water, mm -hmm. and he has to drop it on the slope. Mm -hmm. So just the dropping itself was difficult that they have to place it after mm -hmm. two drops because it kept rolling into the water. So he placed the ball. 
He ran up to see wh- where he's going to land the ball. <laughs> but by the time he came back, the ball already rolled in back into the water. So I think at this case, you might wonder, like, can I just replace it? And the, uh, and the answer is? Yes, you, you can replace it. And uh, you have to find the nearest, the, the close, uh, nearest point where the ball would stay. Well, not close oh, to the well, what happened was that because the ball went back into the water, because <laughs> that uh, that just deemed as it went back into the penalty area. So he took and there was another uh, general penalty, uh, a penalty, one shot penalty to that. Because, oh, um, because no, um, he dropped the ball, right? And then plays the ball. So after placing the ball and uh, any movement after that, that, that placing uh, doesn't count. You have, you, you can't replace the ball. Oh, but he actually got the penalty. Oh, but I, I, that's so I don't that's know. That's interesting because uh, according to the rules, you know, if you, you mark and lift the ball and then replace the ball, anything happened after by natural forces uh, doesn't count. Right. Because he was, he already <laughs> had the intention of hitting it because he dropped it. Yeah. And then after two drops. Yeah. And he placed it. So he placed it, but placing it doesn't mean that he marked it. It was just um, placing it because maybe, of the relief yeah. area. Okay. Yeah. Because you're placing, placing uh, from the, the drops is a very interesting thing, you know, but yeah. it, things like this don't happen <laughs> every day. But, I, but you have to be smart about it because just say Discovery Bay, mm. you play to Jade 8. Mm. Is it Jade 8? The par yeah. three, mm-hmm. yes, and you know yes. the slope that's yes, yeah, very yes. severe. severe yes. So if you drop it and you you don't hit it immediately, it rolls back into the water. Then right. yeah. I'm sorry to tell you, but yeah. that's a, that's a stroke right that's there. So the ball's in inside the water then. Yeah, yeah. That, that's interesting, you know. But there's oh yeah, but you're not lucky enough, you know. That's all. That's mm-hmm. all I can say because uh, because the slope. Uh, very close to the water. Yes. So I think that was good that we kind of covered those mm. two cases because, you know, that could happen just to general golfers, mm. but it's interesting when it's captured on TV and we can see that, you know, elite golfers and professionals also would be in these situations. Mm-hmm. Um, and that actually would bring us to kind of the Q&A session, uh, section of today and also to conclude the whole three-day seminar Mm. in general but um you know to wrap up i do have some other questions for you that Mm. maybe we can discuss Mm. uh also related to ball uh, lifted or moved at rest Mm. and that would be uh, on this case it's actually playing uh the wrong ball okay playing the wrong ball um it happens all the time right Mm. things that this happened to us okay there are two scenarios during the match play, for example. Ah, let's lay down the scenario. So just say I'm playing with you, okay. and then we teed off, um, get into the fairway, we both mm. hit onto the green. After we complete the hole, we okay. found out we actually hit the wrong ball, but we don't know when. Okay, right. so you you both play the wrong ball, right? And just, uh, in this case, you, you exchanged the ball <laughs> during the play. Uh, but you have to find out who uh, and when I think this this, this scenario is, is is different in stroke play. Right, you have to decide before the uh, before you tee off from the next uh, uh, next hole, you have to correct your mistake. Both of you got two stroke penalty and go back. But if you don't know where or when, because you play a, a few strokes after. Uh, before you got on the green, you, uh, it was a par five, you know, uh, one of you got, got on the green uh, in five strokes and the other, the other one uh, in six strokes. That, that it, there are too many strokes in between, right? So you don't know when you have, you have exchanged the balls. So in that case, it's no penalty. You just go on and play with the ball. And second scenario is that after you play this hole and the, and you start playing at the next hole and you found out that uh, you, you both played the wrong ball, same thing. There's no penalty. But during, if during play of the, a, a certain hole, player A plays a wrong ball, player B finds out and tells him that, oh, you, you have played a wrong ball, you have played my ball. In that case, player A has to correct his mistakes. He has to go back and play his 
his own ball and add a general penalty. Add a general penalty. If player A plays a wrong ball and player B plays a wrong ball and they, they, they both find out after the stroke, they both got two stroke penalty. Okay, that, that's the, the big difference. If they find out what happened, they, they, they have exchanged balls during play, but don't, they just don't know when and, and how, where, then there's no penalty. In match play, uh, the player who plays the wrong ball first got a general penalty, there's a loss, uh, a loss of hole. Mm -hmm. But what if after the, the play of the hole and they find out that uh, uh, they have changed, exchanged balls, there's no penalty for that hole. So uh, the scores are just a uh, stand. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a, a big difference between uh, uh, match play and stroke play. Right. So that will be a scenario for hitting the wrong ball when you're with a playing partner. So let's also talk about hitting from the wrong tee. Um, and you can actually search this up. What happened was that in the hero event, um, Stenson and Jordan Speed hit from the wrong tee box on the very, I think it was the very first hole. Yeah, or they were actually the first group. And it might not have been the first hole, but uh, on one of the holes, thank goodness they were caught on camera because after they teed off, the rules official rushed over to them and yeah. told them that they have to um, go back, re-hit the shot, you know, add the, the two-shot penalty from the correct tee box. But what happens if they do not correct it within the hole? They already moved on to the next and teed if, off. Yeah, if, you tee, if um, uh, they tee off on the second hole, for, for example, and they, they, they played the first hole uh, from the wrong tee, uh, they both uh, got this they qualified. Right. So make it's a sure serious, serious bridge. Right. So make sure you check which tee you're playing from, especially if you you are uh, participating in an event and just say they are so you're supposed to play from the yellow tees. You're used to playing the blues and you go back to the tee box and you hit from the wrong one. Oops. <laughs> Hopefully you catch it before you go to the next hole, because otherwise that's a disqualified and uh, you that's, cannot proceed anymore. That's, that's serious. serious breach. Right. So that's been that's been the three day of our case study and rules seminar. Um, I do have some 101 rules seminar that that took place two weeks ago, which are also uh, on record and you can revisit those. Uh, and thank you so much for Mr. Ho for joining us. And we wish you, um, you know, good health during this time, especially in the pandemic. So stay healthy and hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye. See you next time.